So you know there's a bunch of things in business that we now know that at first we definitely did not know. Honestly, we were just bored with all the content out there and wanted to let our people in on the juicy conversations we were having behind the scenes. Hi, I'm Emily, founder of Conscious Boss. Hi, I'm Natalie Ellis, CEO of Boss Babe. Hey, I'm Alexi, founder of Bridge, Soul School, and Epic. We've gathered some of the most incredibly badass entrepreneurs we know and invited them to get real, raw, and honest about all the things so we can get to know their perspectives on how they truly live behind what we see on social media. Everything from running a massive business to sex and relationships to lifestyle and limiting beliefs. There is nothing off limits here. We go all the way there and let you in behind the curtain. If you're looking to get insight into how balancing life and entrepreneurship really looks, not just what you see on social media, then get comfy and join us for these deep dive conversations. We're starting strong here. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. High expectations. Yeah, no, the yeah. pressure's on. I'm like <laughs> sweating here. Turn up the AC, people. Hey, Emily here. Today on our BTS session, we have the beautiful Stacey Lindsay joining us. Stacey is a multimedia journalist who covers everything from civics, career, money, health, and design, and is an articles editor here at Goop Magazine in LA. As well as being a former news anchor, she is just one of those women you want to be around. She's a huge advocate for supporting women in all of their endeavors and is truly an inspiration with her open heart. Today on our episode, we talk about how to create trust and quality content in our noisy world, managing our energy and cultivating presence and why this is super important, and the seasons of life, love, and relationships. We talk about this and so much more, so let's jump into this episode of BTS. <laughs> Are we ready to rock? Ready to rock. Practice that singing, girl. La, la, la. Andy, can I have That's a little good. more volume in my, <laughs> my ears? Good. Sweet. That is not good. <laughs> You wanted to hear that higher? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to hear M's Again. high notes. Her riffs. It's a one-time thing. Yeah. It's a one-time <laughs> thing. Yeah. So so let's get into this whole uh, content overload mm. world we're in. I mean, you've got such a back seat to this. Like, what do you think about all the things? All the things. All Our the front things. Seat. Front what seat. a loaded question. I love There's it. There's so many things. It's funny you say back seat because I feel like we all do. I mean, we're all yeah. kind of front row. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm, I'm, you could say I'm on both ends because I create content. Yep. I, I basically try to create the most interesting, you know, content that there is. But it's still, I mean, I'm a consumer of it as well. Right. And it's just yeah. constant. I think what blows my mind so much is the actual quantity mm. that we're consuming that's right. changed so much. Yeah. yeah, It's an interesting, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, how has the media changed? And of mm. course... It's evolving. It's, right. I think it's changing like truly everything. by the second. Like yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a microcosm of, right. our, of our world. Yeah. 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 Um, but what fascinates me is the actual quantity that we're consuming. Right. And we're consuming it in a way we don't even realize we're consuming mm -hmm. it too. Yeah. I'm blown away yeah. by that. And I'm yeah. really conscious of it too in my job mm -hmm. and, again, as a consumer. Right. But don't you think wow. that's like reflective of where we are in society and the fact that we're just consuming everything? so much yes, in I general do. as in a general, population. Absolutely. Like think of the amount of yeah. trash, the amount of food. Totally. The, I mean, just consumption, I would say, is one of our biggest I issues. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Right? I'm really conscious lately of not consuming the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. like Content-wise or in general? Content-wise. Yeah. I kind of went down a rabbit hole of following all these different people talking about health and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And I'd read someone's Instagram caption and I'd take it as gospel because right. why not, right? Yeah. And then I would do my research and I'm like, that is completely false what has just been <laughs> right. said. Like, yes. So that was bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you consume it and you just, oh, this person like looks fit. I'm going to yep. take whatever she's telling me about abs as, as absolute gospel. And oh, I'm yeah. not really one to run, but I'm on it right now. So yeah. let's do it. But like just <laughs> right, girl. generally like I and I think we we have a commitment to make to ourselves to um really check out references Be and discerning. different things yeah yeah and not just taking content just because someone looks mm. fit takes what they say is gospel of you should um have a carb heavy diet or no carb like whatever it is do your yeah. own research yeah mm. as a co as someone who obviously is a media professional and an actual trained journalist like how do you feel about things like Natalie's just said? Like all of this sort of false information and fake news, as Trump would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, you know, all of this <laughs> stuff that is floating around. Is it frustrating for you? Like what are some of the things that you experience as someone who, you know, honors the craft of right. journalism and, and news and ideas? Yeah, no, thank you for asking that question. It is frustrating for mm -hmm. sure. It also 
sort of revitalizes all the love and endless reverence I have for journalism. I love there's that. Such a it's need great. for yeah, it. There's yeah. such yeah. a right. need. And it's interesting because I went to grad school for journalism. It's gosh. I don't want to say how many years ago now, about eight or nine years ago, man. (laughs) It was was at an interesting time where people were going, you're going to grad school for journalism. Things were changing. That's kind of when a lot of magazines were starting to fold, Mm -hmm. um, newspaper publications. It's just so many things were were changing. And I thought, there's still a need. This is democracy. This is what we need. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah, of course it frustrates me, but mm-hmm. again, I just it drives what I do, what I love to do, and I've really kind of covered the spectrum in terms of media yeah. and the type of journalism that I've done. Yeah. Currently, I'm focusing more on lifestyle journalism, but I've been in news. I was in news for a while. Yeah. So and it's just I also think it people need and are craving really good honest content. So what yeah. you said there is such validity to that true because I think it's as a consumer, it's your responsibility to fact check and yes. to be a really mm. mindful, smart consumer. Yeah. And yeah. then, of course, it's my responsibility as a journalist to tell the truth. And I'm yeah. going to do the best I can. Of yeah. course, mistakes happen. Um, mm. But yeah, fact check, fact check, fact yeah. check. See, I love so that you're essential. bringing that up. But like, what does that actually mean? Because in today's yeah. world, people think they're fact checking, but they're essentially going to similar right. sources right. that right. validate right. the same information. So we can find true. facts to validate anything. Yeah, and then it's like, look, I facts. found it on five different websites, yep. so it yep. must be true. And it's tiring too if you think about it because yeah think, that's what i just want to read an article and i want it to be true yeah, yeah. can yeah. you I don't just tell to me how to live my everything. life please <laughs> i actually wa- yeah yeah i want to throw this one into the space because when we were at south by southwest one of the trends essentially in the world was in business and in life was like being able to generate trust with mm-hmm. consumers trust with audiences yeah in a like, world of growing massive distrust right. yeah, yeah. It, because of all of the things that we're just saying right like yeah. all of these fake news all of these false, sensationalism false infa- yeah sensationalism yeah. How do we combat that as content creators? Like for us today, for example, was like a way that we wanted to just be like, hey, letting people in as content to like our conversations that we have, like behind the scenes, like really more kind of real talk conversations. Mm -hmm. Versus a curated Yeah, versus like this perfect kind of here's a tip and whatever. Um, How do we go about as content creators, like ensuring that we can generate that trust and, and produce content that is... I guess, worthy of being consumed too. And worthy I, of being trusted. Yeah. I think yeah. keep continue just to lean into what is really interesting you as yeah. humans behind the content you're creating. Right. That's what drives me to a lot of yeah. the work I do and a lot of the work at the publication I work at. Mm-hmm. We're asking questions that we generally want to be asking. Yeah. Those yeah. questions, I mean, I should say, they come from consumers and readers. We have wonderful sure. emails that come in or whatnot. And I'll, I'll get a tip from somebody or, or mm-hmm. kind of depends upon the piece that I'm writing. But I'm asking and following the stories that, I want to know. Yeah. And I think that always is a great path to yeah. follow. So the same for you too, creating yeah. the content that just mm-hmm. you get a gut feeling from it or it's a question whether it's about a piece on motherhood or blog mm-hmm. whatever it might be, you know, something that's just really pulling you. Yeah. I think that's the way you kind of plow through the crap. Sorry, pardon yeah. my expression. No. <laughs> well, then be, anything it, is it welcome. Becomes, here. <laughs> yeah, it becomes a real conversation and, real, and yeah. we get to I think I know for me I consume not a lot of content, but I, I love the content I do consume. I'm mm. very discerning about it, but the content I do consume, I love it because it feels really authentic to the creator. Yeah. You know, it feels like they're speaking what's on their heart or speaking through what they're currently yeah. up to, and it feels real. It doesn't mm. feel fabricated. And I do uh, honestly feel like we're in a time where vulnerability and authenticity are like buzzwords now, mm-hmm. and yeah. people are kind of like makeshifting it and being mm. like, how can I create vulnerability in this post? Right, right. And it feels really icky to me. Yeah. And it, I can kind of, I, can you guys feel it when you read it or hear mm, it? It's like, mm, I can feel it. It just feels like, ugh. It's kind but, of like greenwashing. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit too, with everything being organic or natural. Natural. Right, yeah. to that yeah. too. Like what does natural even mean anymore? Right. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is probably like a terrible thing to even coach my clients on. But when I used to um, coach clients on being able to sell online, I used to say, Please do not be the person that follows every single vulnerable post with a buy now link in bio. Uh, oh right. God. Like yeah. constant Stop. because Please don't. that to me. <laughs> Please do not do that. Stop yeah, doing that now. It's so inauthentic. And listen, yeah. I get it. It works. Yeah. And there's a time and a place for that. And I'm yeah. so in for really selling on your experience and how you can truly help and selling right. that mm-hmm. and then linking someone to buy. But to do it all the time and to, mm. to be manipulative in that, I think, you yeah. know, if, if you're going to do it, then vulnerability needs to be one of your pillars, right? It needs right. to be something that you're sharing a Regularly, lot of. Regularly, yeah. But I would also, I, I have a question. Um, I, I 
personally consume a lot of written content i'm mm. i'm really not a video person mm-hmm. and, and we kind of touched on that before yeah. but i don't watch that many videos mm-hmm. i love to read it just nourishes my soul it just feels great yes. mm-hmm. and so and, and i love to write at the same time like there's nothing that feels better to me than first thing in the morning just writing yeah. and and it's great and that's one of my crafts that i i truly want to hone in on and a lot of people say but writing's dead mm. um it's all video it's all video and because I personally don't gravitate towards that, I would love yeah. to know, wh- what do you think? Do you think writing is dead? No, it can't be. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't tell me. Right. Right. Can you tell me I'm never going to sm- smell the smell of a book again? Oh, <laughs> like, it's not. The best. Oh, it's the best. And there's something about a library book too, for I some know. reason. It has yes. a little bit of that musty. Little bit of, it's yes, it's a little best. like crunchy. But that tangible feel <laughs> of a book weird. in your hands. <laughs> I love it. But no, I don't think writing is dead. <laughs> I think what I think might be, I mean, to those dear people out there who maybe don't want to be reading something. I think we're, again, it's the content overload. I think parts, maybe, there's there's no science behind this, but you know, Mm. parts of us might be atrophying a little bit right now, but they'll come back. You know, we're used to, as we were younger, we read Mm -hmm. more. Now it's this constant, constant, quick little instant, you know, social media hits or quick videos or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you're actually not maybe using as much of your reading skills perhaps yeah. it might be that because i That's do think point. innately a lot of us just enjoy there's it's it's a meditation yeah. In, yeah reading so the written word i don't i don't think of anything i think it's coming back with a vengeance maybe yeah. <laughs> just oh, well, that was it. another but one of the trends same retro that, brings yeah it back. retro and like yes. vintage because Keeping people simple. can trust it yes so mm. people in this massive world of distrust they were talking about one of the number one trends for this year is people going back to what they already know from their childhood right that they can lean on and depend on because everything seems so fast. It feels overwhelming. Mm, right. So I think I think that's so true. And right. I've just noticed like even in marketing, they're like, oh, do a top 10 list or a top 10 post or a top mm-hmm. three because people do like the micro versions. Yeah, digestible. Like, digestible. Mm-hmm. But for me, there's nothing more incredible than sitting with a long thought out passage Absolutely. Yep. to get the full context of it. Because truthfully, like a top 10 list I'm not really going to understand the concept right. of what yeah. I'm taking away from that. I may yeah. be able to like action a couple of things, but I don't really get why, right? You know, or, or the theory behind it. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. if you if you want to write too, you have to. I have to say, actually, it's a disservice if you don't. If you have that burning desire, because obviously we all have so much to say. I know you have so much to say, and that makes me so happy too. I love hearing because you don't hear it very often. Mm. People are dying to write and yeah. to, to read more too. So. You just made my day. Yeah. And, <laughs> and bringing I, it back. I do. And, and what you're saying, Lex, too, this whole idea of a top 10, yes, it makes good content and we can all kind of use those things to get people in. But for me, if I read like a top 10 list, I my a loop kind of opens in my brain where I'm like looking for it to be closed mm, yeah. and it doesn't get closed by yeah. a top 10 list. I want to read like something real, something with substance that at the end I feel like I can close the loop. Mm. Like, you know, when you finish a chapter in a book. So satisfying. Right. And then I'm yes. not going to be constantly craving and looking for more content mm. to keep trying to close that right. loop and like yeah. hop into these hot, like... You know, when you get in like a YouTube hole, like I'm not going to, I like to read something satisfying. It's a, it's yeah. a bit like food, right? It's like we can eat like the junk food, but right. it never sa- satiates us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if we eat something really nutritious, that's like a full integrated yeah. thing. Right. We get the full experience and we feel good. Mm. And I love that. I, I feel the same when I get these like little tastes, it like lights something up. And part of me loves that mm-hmm. because then I go on this hunt yeah. for more. Or I follow the seeds of inspiration, yeah. but I don't feel grounded in it, right. which is different. And I think it's quality over quantity too, right? So it's like if you're writing good quality content, it doesn't necessarily have to, you know, be a certain length, but it's like just putting out discern, like being discerning about what content you're creating and making right. sure what you're putting out is, you know, yeah. and how you render it too. And, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. different topics too. Different to- one topic may lend itself better to a quick hit to a to right. a front of the book yeah. a piece or a top ten list, definitely. But something else, mm. it deserves, you know. Some time. The ability to breathe and mm. to have that time too. Yeah, well, because I think, I mean, just sort of circling back to the quality of a content thing, just to sort of hammer it home, I guess, is like, you know, with social media and with these posts and everything like that, it's like, I think there can sometimes be a lot of pressure on people to create content. It's like, oh, I have to post it or I have to do this mm-hmm. thing. And then it's just like yeah. putting things out. And it's like, well, was that something that needed to be shared or was this, you know, could it have been better for you to actually have? actually created something you really cared about and created content around that. I think that's where it comes again with like all of this content that we're consuming is, 
it doesn't have to be, I think, well, I mean, I speak for myself anyway, sometimes I feel pressure to like grade a post or create content and it's like, but I know that when I'm really feeling something and I'm really moved by something, which is what we were saying before, it's always so much more potent and it's so much more satisfying to me to write it in rather than like, oh, I've got to kind of put this thing together. Right, I have and I think to. that we're in that space with Instagram and stuff now where potent. people feel that like that. that. Yeah. When you, when you really, yeah, when you listen to yourself yeah. inside and yeah. Yeah. Definitely. What topic lately have you wrote about that you've kind of explored a lot and it's mm. just felt so exciting <sighs> or good to you? Thank you for asking that. <laughs> I am, I have to say I am obsessed with how we feel during the day at work. Ah. I cannot, I just want to dig into it so deep, but do work, it. Workplace, yeah. Yeah. Let's hear it. Tell place. me what you learned. Oh, endlessly fascinating. But workplace morale. Actually, we, we started talking about a little bit right before we had this conversation, too, of how we can kind of get in our silos during yes. the day, whether yeah. it could be at a cocktail party or yeah. it could be at the office during the day. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating because you have, obviously, the individuals that make this whole. And all the individuals, I think humans are innately fantastic. Yeah. We're yeah. all great. Yeah. We're all doing our best. Mm -hmm. um, but different energies can take place during yeah. the day. And again, in an in, in office, at a company, wherever you may be. And that just fascinates me. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of how to boost morale at work, how to mm -hmm. um, feel your best at work, how to have a great relationship with your coworkers. Yeah. So what are some of those tips? Oh, yeah, so tell, let's, yeah. let's dive into first, like, how to feel your best at work. Because I do feel like there's an epidemic right now yeah. where people are kind of dragging themselves to the office and yes. then dragging themselves home. Like, how does one combat that if they're really wanting to make a shift? Gosh, well, I think this is sort of cliche, but first thing is be yourself mm -hmm. at work because yeah, a lot yeah. of it's it's not it's not always easy to do that. Sometimes you kind of want to f play with the cool kids or whatnot, or yeah. kind of you know fit in, but truly be yourself, even if that's kind of your goofy yeah. whatever it may be. Just do that. Yeah. I'm just gonna let your freak flag fly. Yeah, it's <laughs> all about <laughs> that. Five times fast. I am a bullet too, and it, yeah. you know it. It takes depending on all the different situations, working situations I've mm. been in. It's taken me a little while, but every time I do it, and that's when my work gets better. Yeah. That's yeah. when I get more excited to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, for health tips, it's huge to take care of your health, of course, yeah. because we all know, especially as women, that mm -hmm. is essential for. Everything. our lives for yeah. everything of course <laughs> yeah. our relationships have the mothers that we are the friends that we are yeah. and particularly to the the workers that we are too yeah. taking breaks when you need to take breaks not yeah. feeling like you have to have your butt in the chair nine to five right. and you know yeah. i'm fortunate I, i'm in a situation with a wonderful company and they're very flexible they want you to yeah. take we all want each other to take care of our, um take care of each other and ourselves but take breaks during the day, eat well during the day, drink water. These things sound so basic, but right. it's so true because it will affect how you feel and it will affect how you relate mm -hmm. to people in meetings, how yeah. you treat people. Yeah. Um, I think we definitely need more face-to-face -face contact. Oh, yeah. I think that <sighs> these... We so have you're these saying I can't just spend all day on Instagram. <laughs> you can. <laughs> you can. But I'm going to come in with an intervention. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's just, I mean, we have these incredible platforms, incredible technologies where we can quickly message each other or whatnot. But right. I'll go through sometimes days where somebody will be down there and I won't see them so I try and be mm -hmm. mindful of that yeah we, and we all we all try to be but um just to go up and have a quick even if it's a five second connection with somebody yeah it's awesome well yeah. we've all just started working together in the same office mm -hmm. over in Playa Vista and it's just like even if it's just like we see Natalie a little less because she's in her office but we she pops out I, and we get to sit with her sometimes yeah <laughs> I pop in, in and say office. hi yeah I'm, like, I'm one of those that's just like put on the chair and I forget like mm. the world even is existing around me and then yeah. I finally emerge and I'm like, wow yeah. Yeah. Friends, humans, right. things. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a world out here. It's an interesting point, though, because that also can be totally awesome. To, obviously, depending upon what oh, line sometimes of work it's you're in. I sometimes it's love the zone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I am I the, the, the first person yeah. to lock myself in the library or yeah. the editing bay yeah. and to not yeah. talk to any, anybody for hours. I yeah. absolutely love that. If you're in, quote, flow, um, yeah. you're on your deadline, anything yeah. like that, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of that. It's funny. One thing, another thing that I've been doing, though, that I find is really important is the first few minutes when you actually arrive to the office. Office, making mm -hmm. sure you say hi, good morning to your coworkers, yeah. or asking mm -hmm. how their night was, or if it's a Monday, how was your weekend? That actually really sets the tone, I feel like, for mm -hmm. boosting morale. Ah. And even if you don't, even if you're all super busy for the rest of the day and don't talk to each other, that's one shift that I've really tried to be mindful of doing. And I've noticed it affects me too, because when you yeah. maybe don't get a good morning from a coworker, it doesn't mean anything, you know, yeah, it doesn't mean personal. anything usually, but sure. I've taken it personally sometimes yeah, in the yeah, past. Yeah. I'm oh, like, yeah. whoa, why does she matter? Is he upset with me? Yeah. Or, oh. right. But just doing that in the morning and then, 
even if you have to go off in your silo for the rest of the day. Well, I think that that's, that's important too, because I do think we're living in this age of complete disconnection, mm -hmm. right? Like face to face. We're super connected online, which is beautiful and I yeah. think helpful for, I know I'm in touch with way more people that I wouldn't be mm -hmm. caught up with yeah. if I didn't have like, totally. Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. But what's been really beautiful for me is doing the face to face. And now that we all work in the same office, mm -hmm. like I see more of my friends yeah. and I'm still getting things done, yes. mm -hmm. which is great because before I used to work from home and it's like, it was just me. It's hard. Yeah. It can be hard. Me and my yeah. husband. Yeah. Yep. Yay. I've, I see you all the time. Yeah. But now it's like I get some variety and mm -hmm. that connection has been really beautiful to really like lock in my happiness. And there is yes. so much science behind that. There is. When we connect with people face to face, there are actual mm -hmm. biochemical things that happen within our Truly. body yeah. that lights us up, which lends to our work. Yeah. I have 100%. a great book to recommend if you haven't heard of it or haven't read it. Sebastian Younger's Tribe. Oh, it's I have not. It's a quick read. Okay. Oh my gosh, my heart was just pounding. And I think it's going to be one of those books that I'm going to read every year. But yes. it talks about how innately humans, we are tribal by nature. Oh, we yeah. crave physical touch. We, mm -hmm. we crave face-to-face -face time. Yeah. We crave a feeling of belonging, of course, mm -hmm. and yeah. purpose. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of us don't have that day-to-day -day or even weekly where yeah. our society, unfortunately, is missing a lot of that. And we really need to push to get more of that back. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens actually at the workplace. Yeah. It mm -hmm. also happens outside of work, too, with our community, yeah. neighborhoods, wherever it is we live. But in the workplace, it's huge because it, it, outside of work, how we live, even in New York City, yeah. when there are millions yeah. of people around you, you can go. be the loneliest city in the world. You can yeah. be the loneliest city yeah. because you can technically live your life without having to have an mm -hmm. exchange with somebody else for totally. days, for weeks. Totally. Yeah. So it, it's it's wild. Well, loneliness, but, I mean, that's like a, a massive epidemic, essentially, right? Yeah. Like in such a connect, which is uh, ironic, right? In such a connected world, we have skyrocketing rates of like isolation, loneliness, and depression. So it's like suicide what, too, right? Yes. And suicide, yeah. yeah People the, feel alone. Yeah. Right. yeah. So it's like, and we were just speaking about this on a podcast just before, just about the importance of taking those little moments to say, "Hey, how are you?" Yes. Just dropping in, giving a compliment, like yeah. saying good morning. Like how little it is, but how much it actually means to yeah. people to have that connection and that being seen and being acknowledged. Uh, so small, and, yeah. and and also sort of linking back to the purpose that you were saying. Like I know for my my mum, for example, who doesn't really need to work anymore and was bit like got you know really down with because she really mm -hmm. had no purpose like she was spending a lot of time kind of looking after the house and we have a really nice house in the garden etc but like found she didn't really have purpose wasn't really interacting I guess on a day-to-day -day basis with people and like right. some over something that really matters and how morale can really drop and how it's like yeah. the, again that sort of silo and if we don't have something that's really connecting us and driving us to be with people it really starts to and I think it can be sometimes you don't notice yeah and then it's like oh wow but you, it's yeah. one of those things like you don't know that you need it until you right. get it and exactly. you get it and you're like oh yeah that that right. feels so good exactly. and I think that's why I, I do believe that we're entering an age of the resurgence of like the event oh yeah yes. and you know where we've done a lot of summits online and all the things online mm. and everything online and people want to get out from behind their laptops and yeah. actually meet people and yeah. meet people with similar interests so yeah. I, I think that's really exciting for me I know in this sure. space to go shit I love live events I love yeah. throwing them I love hosting them and mm -hmm. I feel that when people come into my rooms, they're like, oh, God, I needed this. And I didn't oh, yeah. know yes. I needed mm -hmm. this. So Absolutely. Huge. Yeah. It's interesting. I take the train to work. I live downtown, and I work in Santa Monica. Okay. And like the only, the only route human. in L.A. Which that you could is, actually yeah. take Truly, the train you're, on. You're yeah. the only, like the only person that can actually utilize that service. <laughs> I'm so lucky because it literally picks oh, me up right that's by my amazing. house and drops me up right there. Yeah. Awesome. But I love – I've grown to really love the train in my yeah. life, public transportation, because I was without it for so long. Yeah. And there's a connection that happens on the train. You don't yeah. even really realize it, but it's actually a really human experience. Yeah. And there's a politeness. There's just kind of like the brief eye contact. I even just love the little – you give up your seat for, for a woman who's older than you, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Or you give yeah. up your seat yeah. for a pregnant I, – I love all of that and mm -hmm. those things that we're missing in life, too. But we're in this really – bad smelling thing that's moving for <laughs> right. 40 minutes together we we're in this together guys yeah. you know yeah. and I, I like that camaraderie yeah, exactly. yeah. it's really yeah. weird but we've been through this intense trauma together this morning <laughs> <laughs> we will bond and believe me yeah. in LA and same with New York right. you, you you see and smell some intense stuff oh, but I, do. Get yeah. I lived in New York for a long time and very familiar with train smells yeah <laughs> it's real <laughs> but it's interesting I wouldn't think that I would ever 
say that, but I look forward to the train. <laughs> yeah, I thing. actually used to love, like, on the train in New York, I used to see people and, and think about everybody is coming from something. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe that woman over there who has a sadness to her, mm -hmm. maybe she just had a fight with her partner. Right. That little kid who's, like, upbeat, maybe, like, he just got to see his dad for the first time mm -hmm. since he's been away in the army. You know, like, we all have a story, we and I think do. the train for me reminded me of that story because I'm coming on the train, mm -hmm. headed to wherever I'm headed, with my story yeah. Of, yeah. of whatever happened before this moment yeah. and whatever's going to happen after. Mm -hmm. So cool. I love that. Yeah. I totally experienced this whole loneliness thing um, mm. before moving to LA. So me and Steven, we lived more up north um, and we were tucked away in this private neighborhood and it was very quiet and he was traveling for work constantly mm. and I was in mm. full on scaling mode and there really yeah. wasn't much around where I was and there was days I would literally not even go outside so I wouldn't yeah. even see yeah. a single person wow. mm. and it didn't even dawn on me how bad that was until yeah. like I'd have people come to visit and then I'd be exhausted right yeah, I'd be yeah, like I am not used time. to this <laughs> <laughs> and so it was I had to learn how to like mm. reuse that energy and I think it's the case for a lot of us where we feel so introverted because actually extroverting and, and being with people can be truly exhausting oh, sometimes yeah. when we're not used to it. But Lex, you, you say you love running live events and I know you do a crazy amount of live events. Yeah. How do you manage your energy to show up for that many people and be around that many people because you're on stage a long time for days yeah. right yeah we do like 14 hour days and it's it, intensive work so we're doing everything from trauma work to processing like it's deep mm -hmm. somatic mm -hmm. work so it's not just like seminar leading from the stage it's truly like working it's with a people. lot yeah. and it's been in our rooms yeah. um yeah, honestly, like the biggest thing, because I used to get exhausted. Like I used to be Monday morning after our events, feel like a train hit me, mm -hmm. you know, just like I can imagine you. totally out. But what I realized there was like this subtle shift is in the events that I felt really exhausted and really just like out, there was a subtleness of making it about me. So there's a subtleness of like, I've got to be on. I've got to be here for this mm. person. I've got to make sure I'm saying the right thing so that they'll get this particular point. And when I started shifting really like unconsciously, but I just have been playing with this idea of like, what if I just like let go and let, let it move me. And I, I leave the events now feeling really full and energized because I feel like I didn't do much. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, it got done through me mm -hmm. and less of like me actioning and trying. And I think as well, you know, we've, we've been doing this particular workshop for so long that it's really embodied now. And it's less about trying to hit all the points and really just about being present to what's in the room. And that has changed the game. And honestly, when I get booked to speak now, and this is probably bad that I'm announcing this. If you ever book to speak me. I will not be here. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, if you ever book me to speak for you, I legit like feel into it. Mm -hmm. And I did this recently for an event of 2,000 women. And usually all my nerves and the preparation and all the things to try and get it right and like mm -hmm. be impressive essentially. I had to let that go, honestly, because after having a kid, I just didn't have the energy for it anymore. Yeah. It's like the cost is way too high. I'm either not going to speak anymore or I'm just going to trust that I can do this. And now I leave these events going like, wow, that felt really juicy and really fulfilling. And I would do that more, but I'm not going to do it that way anymore yeah, where I yeah. feel like I'm stressing to get it right. Mm. So it was really, it's been, it's been a gradual shift, but um, the more I do it, the more I can actually trust that there's something bigger moving me. Mm. And how much of your audience plays into that too, depending if you're, I imagine that's, there's some variations with if you're speaking to a group of women as opposed to a group, does that vary or the setting too? It does. does. That I think I used to have intimidation around certain audiences, mm -hmm. like, mm. like, men used to intimidate me because mm. it's like oh are they judging me like what's the stories and like mm. I've got to overcome their stories and I've got to prove something and again now I think it's more because I'm just trusting like it's all perfect I'm here for whatever reason I'm here whoever's going to hear it is going to hear yeah. it whoever's not is not whoever's going to judge me is already doing it right like, it's, it's already going to happen you can't control that you can't control yeah. it and I think that's been such a like such a freedom for me and such a mm. miracle in my life because I think I, I was run by that for a long right. time, mm. you know? I imagine we can just get so trapped in our thoughts, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, they can be it's, crippling sometimes, too, for thinking sure. these things, and there's no truth that these are just conditioned thoughts that are running through us and just yeah. pushing through those and, again, being present. Totally. There's such a gift to that. 
Yeah. It's amazing. I even think just well, presence in life in general I, is mm-hmm. right. Go it's for like it. Because I know that's like, <laughs> you are in that right well, now. Well, no, but I think, I mean, that's, that is what we're craving. That's true connection is presence. Mm-hmm. Like there's no connection in some, when you sit down with someone whose mind is running 10,000 other places and you can feel that they're there, but they're not really there. Mm-hmm. And like, I was yeah. that person for sure. You too. know, <laughs> like we had an interaction with a friend the other day and it was like, it was so interesting because I could see her. She was there, but she was like, so many other places and yeah. I was like that used to be me like I was that person is <laughs> like I'm here but I actually have 10,000 other things and that's not presence right and like that's yeah. I think what happens to us when we try to get it right when we're like I'm gonna go perform and people that's not it's like what they say people are not gonna remember what you say they're gonna remember how you make them feel and the 100%. only way you do that is if you are with in. them in their presence like allowing it to like yes. that's what it is and that's what we're missing that's, that's why it. that's what people are really craving yeah there do you is, guys know uh do you guys know uh uh, Michael Beckwith. Yeah, Michael Beckwith. He's the founder of Agape. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's amazing. He he's a mentor of both mine and my husband's, and he married us. But he's somebody. If if those of you mm. listening have not heard of him, look him up. Yeah, he's so present to the moment. I often leave Agape not even knowing what was said, mm. but I feel right. so moved. <laughs> right. I'm like, totally. I don't know what just happened. Yep. But wow, I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I can't even articulate to somebody what mm-hmm. landed for me, but it all landed. Right. Yeah. You know, it's so yeah. weird. Well, it was similar to the, the like, I brought this up on a previous episode, but we went to a prison the other day and with these, with these inmates and it's like, I couldn't tell you really a lot of what happened there. It was the most powerful thing, but it was like, we had no phones the whole day. We were just in it with them, it. Ju- like dancing, jumping, playing, crying. Like it was so powerful because we were all just fully present with each other, like yeah. connecting deeply, seeing each other, just no other agenda. We were just there. We were all just there. And it was so powerful because it was so visceral yes. and it's like that is what is that piece that's that's missing you know yeah. um and, and it's it just transcends everything everything else too. everything you know just stereotypes yeah. bite all, all of it, of it. oh yeah i mean there because there is yeah. nothing more attractive there's nothing sexier there's nothing more yeah. powerful and yeah. it, again it just transcends everything yeah isn't that it's, interesting too because like as we're saying this i'm like god i wish like the 18 year old version of me could have heard this right. because there are so many times when i have like these amazing opportunities to be in certain rooms with certain people or mm. have a meeting with somebody and how much i was trying to be the thing that oh, i thought yeah. they needed me to be Versus like actually being present. Because if I'm mm. trying, I'm in my head going, am I doing this right? Is, yeah. this, is this what I should say or should I say this? Yeah. And and how disconnected I must have felt from the mm. other person, right? It's right. like I'm hearing yeah. this and I'm like, God, yes, this is, yes. Yeah. I wish I would have known this. You know, mm. obviously hindsight's right. a bitch. But. We love the old hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, but I think sometimes you have to, you have to actually go like – you can't sometimes experience something unless you've experienced the other, like it's that yeah. duality, right? Yeah. Like you can't only experience full presence when you've realized that on the other side of that is scattered, not really here, feeling like I'm other places. Like yeah. you kind of have to know what that is to then know, wow, this feels really good. Totally. How do to I stay it here? Because <laughs> yeah. it's way better than over there. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's such awesome. a good point. Yeah. So true. One yeah. thing I, I found myself doing a while ago and I read a book, I can't remember the title of it, but it, it kind of changed something in me. I was the kind of person that would watch Netflix while I was on my phone. Oh, or yeah. I'd be <laughs> right. Sitting. Definitely at, do that. Yeah. yeah. I'd be sitting on my sofa listening to a podcast while like working and like just doing multiple <laughs> that things. Multitasking yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. All at once. Yeah. And it's so funny because when I started to pull myself away from that, I would train myself mm. to just be and be okay with that. And for a yeah. lot of people, mm. I think that can be terrifying mm. oh let me just go and sit on the sofa with nothing to do right it's i i just had my um right. my grandparents over from the uk they were staying with me for two weeks which was amazing but i came home from the office one afternoon and they were just sitting on the sofa with my puppy <laughs> so they were doing cute. nothing else yeah, they were just sitting that. there yeah <laughs> so i sat down i was like hey let's go for dinner tonight like we can leave in about two hours they were like okay and so I pulled out my laptop to keep working and they just sat there. And <laughs> I'm like, happy as I'm <laughs> right here. <laughs> and I turned around, I was like, you're kind of making me feel uncomfortable because you're making me feel like you want to go now and you're bored. And so like, sh- do you want me to stop working? And like, we'll go now. Yeah. And she just looked at me with the most confused look on her face. She was like, <laughs> I'm not bored. I'm, I'm fine. So interesting. We'll go Love when you're it. ready to go. Yeah. We're quite happy right now. We've been walking this afternoon. Like we just, just want to take a few minutes. And that blew my mind. I wow. was like, fuck, how yeah. little time do we spend just right. sitting mm-hmm. and being? That yeah. is my life 
goal. Yeah. That to me <laughs> is the goal. ultimate state right. of enlightenment. Yes. <laughs> I want to get there. Yeah. They weren't even talking. They were just sitting. They were just there. straight chilling. That wow. is so amazing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I think that's there's a powerful point in that because I think so many people, especially who are in like the conscious world mm-hmm. and doing the work, they often judge people in their lives like, oh, they're not as woke as I am and blah, blah, mm. blah. But there is so much wisdom just sitting right in front of us if we're willing to see it. And sometimes the the people who do the least amount of personal development work are already right. so tapped they're like in. I'm already good yeah but yeah. they're like they're tapped into the simple truths mm. of life and I think sometimes we make it so complicated right where yeah. it's like oh oh wait you're not bored right now because right. we think we always have to be running mm. or doing something or on our way to so I just I love that and I think mm. a lot of us can really learn more from the people around us that maybe we've been judging and mm. you know having our own stories about yeah yes. and I mean we'll be like wait you're not bored right now okay that's triggering something in me what's it triggering yes. why is it doing that and yeah. we'll go down this whole rabbit hole instead of being like ah okay right why? okay great <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's clearly needed. a deep wound under here I must fix and yeah. resolve from my childhood we don't have to process yeah. everything yeah like yes <laughs> okay yeah. just let's say okay Period. there's no explanation <laughs> that, could, that could be an interesting point about processing Oh God! Try to <laughs> appreciate too that there's really a time and a place for everything too, yeah. and leaning yeah. into that more and yes. having trust in that too, yeah. and that can yeah. relate to every single thing in our life. So there's a time to sit on the couch and be okay, and yep. dinner's going to be you're yeah. going to be leaving in a half an hour for dinner, and you're there right now. There's a yeah. time to consume media. There's yeah. a time not to be consuming media. Yeah. There's a time to be just on the train commuting to work. Yeah. And granted, it's a wonderful time to read too, but. Yeah. I'm not against multitasking, of yeah. course, but no, there's a it. time and a place for <laughs> everything. And I yeah. think mm-hmm. that there's some peace to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's Truly. like the seasons of life, of mm-hmm. work, of relationship. And, and I especially feel it in relationship. You know, I've been with my partner for a while and, you know, we have a child and are attempting to have more children. And just realizing that there are seasons and phases to love. And for me to hold on to this idea of what we were in the beginning, especially mm-hmm. after having children, it's like we're in a new season now. Mm. And we get to really appreciate the season we're in. And, and I feel like that philosophy has supported me so much in right. all of my life instead of holding mm. on to this idea. I'm mm. supposed to be here right. right now. Or like, you know, you've been in a really like settled and like mm. explorative and fun and playful phase. Mm. And instead of making yourself wrong for that, you're like, right. yes, let yeah. me just step. This is where I'm at. Um, right. Yes, available for that. <laughs> this feels good. <laughs> and if you're different, yep. if you look at how you're different now, perhaps, than you were, whether it's in context of relationship or mm. work or just within with yourself, that means you're evolving. Yeah. So yeah. that's a good thing, that's too. Good. Because I used to get stressed about that, too, sometimes. Like, yeah. wow, you look at photos, even, too. And usually mm-hmm. it's a, a vanity thing. But yeah. no, this means that I am evolved. This yeah. means that I have mm-hmm. lived so I've lived all this. I've experienced right. all this. So yeah. I want to keep leaning into that. Totally. That's, Totally. And I think like sometimes we enter phases of feeling really reflective and wanting to just be in our space. And sometimes Mm. we're really passionate and driven and like so hungry for a particular idea that you can't stop us at that point. And I think, you know, to this point is is honoring where you're at and being okay with it and not making it wrong. Mm hmm. But like really checking in. Yeah, Check- really Are you avoiding in. it or are you like honoring yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the thing is, is that what's there is what's alive and that's going to be what's going to drive you. So it's like if you are in in super inspired, motivated drive mode, like I, something I've come to realize as well about my energy is that when it's there, utilize it. So it's like if I'm in <laughs> full energized, motivated, like go. Like I'm like, okay, I get to utilize this, create content, yeah. do my things, work, like do all of that. Because I know now and I've been through enough seasons to know that that doesn't always stay there. And it's like I also now know to honor when I'm feeling really tired and drained and like not excited to like not make myself push through that because it's like this is what's here, this is what's alive. Yeah. And going with the energy of that. Like mm-hmm. right now I am in that super juicy, playful, excited place and it's like feeling really great. So it's like – so I'm just going to stay with this as long as it feels good. And then just like really honoring because I think we're in a society where we've trained ourselves to just push through all the time. Push through, yeah. create, just you're Truly. like do buck it up, all. drink yeah. your coffee. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah, do it all. Make like, it And the body is so wise and the energy is so wise. And I think it's even like circling back to what you said about creating content. It's like go with what feels alive. Right. It's like if your body is yelling at you to like <laughs> yes. take a break and like have it, like you will always come back. I always experience that I come back so much more rejuvenated and rested and inspired when I actually so honor much. what's there. Um, but I Elizabeth think Elizabeth Gilbert sorry. talks about that. I don't know right. if you've heard that TED great TED talk, and she writes about it in Big Magic too. Oh, just, it's a genius! Genius! Oh, oh goosebumps! And I love so it too good. because it just takes the narcissism out of it yeah. too. Like, what is, what is it? Yeah, do you want to? What is it? Flowing, really, essentially, genius is 
moving and it's flowing yeah. all throughout our world, right. really throughout the universe. Yeah. And it may visit you this afternoon and it oh, may flow yeah. through you for a little bit and then it yeah. may turn around and it may visit you yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> yep. and it's it may, like the muse. And right? it's yeah. exactly. Yeah. So just really holding it and going with it while it's visiting you. Yeah. And then it's okay when it, when it passes through. And, yeah. and she talks, it's interesting in context with – you want to still be like using writing as an example. You yeah. want to show up. You want to write every day. Mm. I mean, some days, some articles, some chapters come so much easier than yeah. others. And I sure, think that's sure. the genius. But yeah. it, it just, there's a fluidity to it and yeah. just going with it and embracing yeah. it, what you're saying, Em, mm. and, you know, being in that state when you're feeling it. And, mm. and so it's just, good. It's, yeah. it's amazing. I actually really love that her talk on that because what really was highlighted for me was what you said. It like takes the vanity out of yeah. ideas mm. because it's this it's old. It's going to visit you and it might visit someone else. Yeah, and it's this old idea that the, the Romans and the Greeks really adhered to where if, uh, let's say I did a particular work of art or a video or a piece of content and you guys were like, wow, it's amazing. Mm. I'd say, yeah, my genius was amazing right. that day. And I <laughs> yeah. literally credit my genius that. because yeah. it wasn't me. It mm. was that thing that moved through me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people nowadays want to take credit for all the things and this was me for yeah. a really long time like oh that's my idea and it, but the yeah. truth is like ideas are dropping at the same time to people all over the yeah. world and we see this in patents yes like you can literally look at mm. patent history mm. and the same ideas dropped at different places all around the world throughout history wow it's like that genius needed that idea to come through and yeah. it's like i'm gonna try a bunch of different people and let's right. see who see runs, who with, runs it. with it yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah fascinating i'm literally yeah. next time i don't want to go out i'm gonna text a friend saying hey my genius just hit <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys my genius is currently so with me and i'm gonna yeah. roll yeah we're but, going to get coffee and we're gonna hit it today yeah. <laughs> something that i found really interesting when i kind of went through a little bit of like a basically that the the energy and experience that came before my current energy of play and everything was this overwhelm and this frustration and the stress and one of the books that I started reading through one of my coach's recommendations was this book called Pema Chodron uh, when things fall apart and it really put me onto this sort of train of thought and this track of like I think in society we we are addicted to things going well and to things yeah. going right and to things yeah. always working out for us and it's like so when things when we have a lack of energy when things don't always like go the way that we want them it's like we can sometimes perceive them to be wrong or broken and yeah. and this 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 idea of flow it's like flow is multi-directional it's, yeah. it's <laughs> and like it's not always in good. and it's out it's right. like it's yeah. like breath in breath out tied yeah. in and tied out that's flow but like as a society we've become addicted to flow being the things that we recognize as productive helpful tied in tied in yeah yeah totally and it's like you know really coming to understand that when those things go down that's na a natural part of the process as well you yeah. know and understanding like i feel like that's really allowed me to understand that okay, this is all good. Like, I don't have to be like, why is this happening? Why don't I have energy? Right. Why can't I create right now? What's it's, wrong with me? And yes. how do I control it and right. contort right. it to, to meet my Manipulate standards? It. Yeah. Versus like, what is the wisdom that's here for me? Right. Mm -hmm. Because again, it goes back to these seasons. And I think we really have to, to get reacquainted with the idea that life is seasonal. Yes. Yeah. You know, like sometimes we're in a season of really like harvesting and yeah. taking in all that we've produced and worked towards mm -hmm. for the past six months. Yeah. Sometimes it's work, 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 plant, yep. plant, plant, work, right? Work, 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 work. And work, it, girl, practice those singing <laughs> chords. I hear you. But honestly, like that, that is a huge thing. And I do think people are, they're addicted to good. They're addicted yep. to the high of like life always needing to be mm -hmm. perfect. And I yeah. think the resistance to that is causing a lot of the suffering we're seeing in the world. 100%. And yeah. it's causing a lot of people like just, you know, blanketing, getting on these like drugs to yes. help them feel better when truthfully yeah. it's like, feel what you're feeling right now because mm -hmm. there's something here for you it's yeah. part of the human experience yeah it, it is and yeah. quitting things because it's like oh this didn't work maybe i'm not meant to do it. it's like no this is just a natural part of getting to that next high like yeah you know because yeah. that gives you that resilience yeah, to keep going right. with yeah. things and to yeah. not feel like if you feel like things are broken like that's such a like dark place to be you know and, yeah. and knowing that you have that choice to be like oh this like oh okay perfect this yeah. is just the, the flow like, no, it's such, I'm so glad you brought that up. It's such a mm. conversation we need to be having more, yeah. too. Yeah. And it's such a part of the rhetoric, too. Like, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Right. You don't even right. think about ah. it. Robotic. Yeah. Actually, not, I'm not good. I was yeah. really down this way. You know, whatever right. it may be. I mean, you don't. And that makes a really, lot really of people really uncomfortable. That's it the does. thing. Right. It yeah. does. We're not used to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're not used to that. But, I mean, how right. refreshing would that be? Right. I mean, for me, if someone said that, I'd be like, oh, wow. Okay, this person's actually here. Again, back to presence. Yep. They're actually present right now. They're not just robotically responding. They're actually being real with me. Exactly. Like, what an 
opportunity to actually connect with this person. Right. But I think that makes people really uncomfortable. Well, also, it's, yeah. it's, it's vulnerability. And I yeah. think that as a society, that's something, and we were sort of talking about it in terms of content and things, but I think vulnerability is still at its core something that, I mean, it's in the word. To be vulnerable is frightening, is to, be, is, yeah. to be exposed. And yeah. I think that... Um, you know, that is challenging for people to actually be seen in that. And I, I remember actually it was at The Bridge, the workshop that Alexia and Preston do, where I re it really landed for me. Like I was scared of, you know, being vulnerable or being seen in that. And I remember, you know, there's many, many opportunities within that experience to be in vulnerability. And I remember whenever I saw it in others, when people were being just raw and vulnerable, how much I wanted to lean in, like yeah. how attractive it was, because it's so human and yes. it's, it's like humanity and you're just like, wow, I want to lean towards you. Yes. Yeah. But when we're thinking about doing it in ourselves, it feels like... <gasps> I so couldn't, scary. but it's actually like such a human attractive thing. Yeah, we get that the opposite that connection yeah. that we think we're going to get. Mm -hmm. And isn't it funny? Like, I don't know if you guys have been in the space where you you can feel someone's truth and then you can feel them like kind of oh, ignore yeah. it or mm, pass by right. it. Mm. It's almost like repulsive because you feel it. Yeah. And it's like in our workshops, it's a microcosm and mm -hmm. you can really see everything. Mm -hmm. And when, when people are putting the walls up, it's so disconnected. Yeah. Right. And it's so obvious. Yeah. And, and the people who are fully just there, you just, oh, yeah, it's like that person. They're so powerful in that moment. Yep. So yeah. Amazing. I think one thing I've been trying to really, which is really hard, but also embrace when things are uncomfortable yeah. and moving through that. I find that a lot with my relationship. Now my, I, I'm very, very much in love. I'm so, so grateful. And it's really uncomfortable sometimes yeah. because yeah. he doesn't let me get away with it. Yeah. Yes. Looking at me, I'm like, yes. oh wait, I can get around this. I can script oh, this issue. Yeah. No. Yeah. And the really good friendships too and the really good connections at work. Yes. When I, it's uncomfortable a lot when mm. it's good and juicy and yeah. real because yeah. that's what stretches you. Yeah. Yeah. After you get through that, whew, Wow, yeah. I'm actually more evolved yeah, now. Yeah. So when something is uncomfortable does not mean bad. No. no. You know, that's different than when something is bad. You have a gut yeah. sense. But when something is uncomfortable, it means growth. It yeah, means it's just new. It means good, juicy stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's like <laughs> this end. is just new. I haven't mm -hmm. navigated this yet. And like, you know, I'm, I'm curious to know because we've got three of us here who are in partnership and one calling in her mm -hmm. person. What has been one of the most uncomfortable things for you being in partnership with your person? <sighs> <laughs> um, well, I can I can definitely dive into that. I think the most uncomfortable thing for me is with him. I've taken off every layer mm, that I possibly yeah. have, yeah, and yeah, I've yeah. been like, "This is me," which is beautiful. Yeah, and it's terrifying. Yeah, to to really put yourself out there. And one of the stories that I used to tell myself was that things that I loved leave me, mm. or I lose mm. things, mm -hmm. and. Um, when I first came into the relationship, I was very much, I think I wasn't even attached enough. I was trying to keep myself out of it to a certain point yeah. that the fear wasn't even coming up. And the second we locked in and got married, I was like, whoa, I'm really <laughs> not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, this this is it. And that fear kicked in. And I, was, I was like, okay, fear doesn't like to be named. Let's name it. I'm like, I'm terrified you're going to leave me. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, amazing. I love that you just said that. Mm. Like, let's talk about oh, it. Yeah. And, um, and, and his fears came up too. And, it's so great to have someone where you can put everything on the table mm, with yeah. and you can clear it out and, and go forward with that. But I mean, we still have uncomfortable conversations. Like you were saying, M my thing is when we have really uncomfortable conversations, I laugh like okay. so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah, this is so awkward. <laughs> like I'm trying to say something really serious and I'm laughing my head <laughs> off and he's sitting there looking at me like, you are not getting away from this. So I'm going to watch you laugh and squirm and we're going to get through. <laughs> oh my gosh, and wow. it's, so cute. it's hilarious. But yeah, th that's been really important. Mm. And I think it comes out of just absolute crucial conversations where you sit down and you lay it all out and you, you give all of yourself to that person and you accept yeah. that, you know, it, this might work out and it might not. Yeah. But if it doesn't, I can hold my hands up and I can mm. say I, I give everything I had. Yeah. And I all whatever it is in my life, I want to be that person. Yeah. I don't ever want to look back on anything and think maybe that would have worked out differently had I yeah. um, thrown myself in a little bit. Yeah. So with all my friendships, with my work, with my partner, I'm in. I love it. And yeah, oh. that's amazing. So Thank good. you for sharing that. Yeah. That's amazing. All in. Yeah, echoing so much of what you said too, I can relate to so much of that. And 
absolutely horrifying that this man in front of me actually really loves me for me. Right. Yes. Like, what? what? Are you sure? Not the idea, right. <laughs> not the perfectly groomed me at dinner. Yeah. It's like, no, the actually really with, with my layers off. Yeah. Is, to quote, it's just totally, that's horrifying. And also really um, wants me to say what I want. That has been yeah. so hard. Genuinely say what I want, not yeah. according to conventions, expectations, what my family maybe wants for me or my friends or society, what I want, wow. and he's a platform and he's there for that. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> and, and it's interesting because, you, you know, surface, you're like, oh, that would be great. Right. But how often do we as women actually right. claim what we want? Right. Because right. yeah. what we want often isn't always sparkling and great and it no. isn't conventional. And yeah. 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 And sometimes we don't even, we can't even put words to it because we haven't thought That's about it. That's one of the enough. hardest things too. You know, because it's like we're thinking about what everybody else wants and like how can we be exactly. a vessel to make sure that happens. Mm. It's Truly. Like, oh wait, well, what do I want? Right. Mm. And then also thing. receiving it. That's, a, that's, that's a situation for a lot of women too. Oh being yeah. Being able to receive what it is that you actually want. Yeah. Which mm. is real giving, right? We can't mm. truly give unless we're willing to receive. Yeah. So what about big. you, Lex? Come. Yeah. I mean, both of these for sure. Um, I would say like the stickiest thing for me currently that I'm currently in is rediscovering who I am sexually as a woman post baby. Mm. Wow. You know, like right. that's, that's a big thing. Right. And I feel like I've always been fairly connected to my sexuality and, and, you know, felt really free in my sexuality. And after giving birth, it's like, oh, I, I literally have a new structure. Mm -hmm. Like my body is different. Things don't feel the same. Um, I, I love how my body is post baby. I, I love what my body's been able to go through. So it's it's less about that, but like literally my pelvis is in a different place. Mm, you know, it's like my body yeah. has changed in that way. Yeah. And really finding a new dynamic between my husband and I that we now almost we have a third person in our relationship, you know. So it's like navigating being in love with another person mm. that's not my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm so in love with my child and he's so in love with our child that finding the same amount of love and attention and energy for mm. each other when that feels safe and secure and like, oh well you're good. Right. And this little being needs us so much. Mm. The discomfort I'm leaning into is like really powerfully navigating that from a conscious space and having those conversations with Preston and like just being an open space to talk about it and to not feel shame around it. And like even here, like I'm committed yeah. to having more of these conversations mm -hmm. openly because I feel like enough women don't talk no, about it. Yeah. yeah. And it's I like agree. the thing that like women talk about when they get together and mm -hmm. then like men talk about when they get together. Mm -hmm. But the dynamic changes after we have kids. Mm. And and I'm excited to like rediscover my sexuality in this new phase as a mama bear. So I love that. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. On that note, we're gonna have to wrap it up in a moment. <gasps> These conversations no. are just like wanna keep them Crazy. rolling and rolling, but it's <laughs> just God. I know. So does anybody else want to bring anything else into the space before we say thank you to the oh, beautiful Stacy? I'm so grateful that you brought that up too, because I'll just one more note to add to that too. I, I don't have children, um, but I've gone through really huge things too in my life. Yeah. There's moves, changes, new jobs, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I think discovering your sexuality wherever you are in life is something mm. we need to talk about. It's yeah. huge. It's so important. So so huge. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Yeah. It's yeah. And I think it's a journey that's ever evolving, that. right? Yeah. I feel like I'll, I'll get to a point with like this mama bear sexuality and then maybe have another kid and then see what happens or yeah. enter my forties and then menopause. And you know, it's like, I feel like we're always in that journey. Right. Um, but it's exciting. And I think if we enter whatever growth and discomfort we're in with that kind of mindset of like, oh, let's see, this could be fun. Mm -hmm. I think it'll just change how we be with it. Give me some juicy story ideas. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I, love go. It. I love it. Talk about juicy content. Here live content right here. <laughs> I'll read that. I will consume that. Do some research for I me. Will. Let me I know will. what you find. <laughs> well, as always, I feel I, need, I should throw to Natalie for our closing <laughs> statement. <laughs> is that my thing? I feel yeah. like it's your thing now. No, <laughs> this is this has been amazing. And thank you all so much for just showing up without any masks on, without mm. any layers, and just being such powerful women in our own truths. Mm. I, I think... As we do this, we really are just uh, just giving other women the space to do it as well. Yeah, and and yeah. this this work, this is this content, yeah, is powerful. And mm. and so I'm really grateful to all of you. And and thank you so much for listening and sharing your time and your space with us. We really really appreciate it. And as always, if you did listen to any of this and and something really stuck with you, we all want to know what it is. So we please do. just yes. you know take a screenshot, share on your 
your Instagram or Facebook stories, whatever it is, and tag us so that we can, you know, come and stalk you a little bit and <laughs> share you out to our audience too because yeah. th- these messages are, are really important. So, yeah, big thank you. Yeah. And if it was my singing, that would totally be understandable as well. <laughs> I mean, your singing is pretty awesome. I love your singing. <laughs> it's but a I, little bit of a joke. Yeah, yeah. I, I do want to just preface again, you know, like Natalie shared, if something resonated, please share it with us, but yeah. also take action. Because yes. I do think that's where things actually change in this world of mm. massive amounts of information we can get into consumption mode of just more 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 give me that hit so I feel inspired and motivated but if we're not actioning it we're not actually changing so take something from this and take some action or a step in a direction that you want to head in Mm -hmm. and step by step by step Remember the seasons of life. It's totally. all a process. All yeah. Process. That action literally just might be taking off a mask in one of your relationships so, and having a conversation similar to this. So yeah. it doesn't have to be cray cray. Mm-hmm. It could be pretty simple. Namaste. Right, Namaste. 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 On that note, we out. <laughs>